Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lokes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. In this video lesson, we're going to look at a program uh, written by Young and Molenkamp for their uh, book or set of notes, Introduction to Numerical Methods, because I think that they did a great job on this and it's got some lessons that I can add to what I've been showing you already. I couldn't improve on what they had set up as a starter. So they wrote a script to do the bisection method for solving a function. And the way they've done this is they've named a function my bisect, and it's a function of f, a, b, and n. Now notice that they use proper coding rules to define the function. Uh, they say that this is going to do n operations, so the last number here is the number of op iterations of the bisection method for a function f. And what we need to input is a function f, a and b, the limits, the left and right hand limit of my interval, and n, the number of bisections to do. Now recall that when I do this, the bisection method requires that the function evaluate is positive for one end of the interval and negative for the other end of the interval. So I need to make careful choices for A and B for this to work. And then N is the number of bisections to do because we haven't uh, in this program given it any way to say, yeah, close enough, let's quit. Uh, the outputs here will be X, the estimated solution, and E, an upper bound on the error. So first thing they do is evaluate the endpoints and verify that there really is a sign change. So we want to evaluate the function at A and B, our left and right hand limits, and simply make sure that you know one of them is positive, one is negative. So they called C, F of A, and F of B they named D, and they check to see that the product is greater than zero. Okay, if it isn't, then they're going to give you an error message and stop the program and tell you that you've got the same sign at both endpoints. You need to put in new values for A and B, or A or B. Okay, if you have opposite signs, then it's going to go ahead and it's going to put headings. And notice there's not a lot of formatting here. This is just simple. We're putting spaces in for format. This is, you know, it works fine. Uh, and then what we want to do is start our loop. So we're going to go through the loop n times. So we're going to put in for i equals 1 to n. And then we want to find out what is the midpoint. And so all we do is take the two endpoints, a and b, and average them, and then evaluate the function there. We're going to or place these two numbers there, my new midpoint and the value of the function at that point, so we can just keep track of it. So it's going to display those numbers along the way. You don't need to have this in there. It is a way so that you can troubleshoot. If you want later, you can come in and you could put a comment sign here if you know that it's doing what you want. Then you're going to check and see if you've solved the solution or found an exact solution. If so, quit. So it's checking, is y exactly equal to 0? All right, well then you've got your answer. All right, and you're going to stop the program. If not, which is normally the case, then you're going to decide which half of the interval to keep. And so what you're wanting to do is check that f at your midpoint is positive or negative and pair it with the one that has the opposite sign. So that's what we're doing here. So we're taking C and multiplying by Y. That's my new F of midpoint, I guess. And if that's negative, then B is going to be my, or X will be my new B. And if not, then A is my, uh, is now the midpoint value. At this point, once I've gone through it 20 times, again, remember we weren't checking to see if there was no change. We just simply said, yeah, we're just going to do it, you know, n times, whatever that is. And then we have x equals a plus b over 2, and the error is b minus a over 2. 
So now we want to run this. So be sure you saved it, and I had already saved this. And we want to be able to uh, make sure that we've got the significant digits that we want, so be sure you put in format long. And now I just simply need to type out the my bisect with my function. Now you can do this a couple of different ways, but I've got this set up so that my bisect in line, now this is putting the function in in one line here. So in line x cubed minus 5 is my function where x is the variable. At 1, this is negative 4. At 2, this is positive 3. So I put in 1 and 2 as my limits, and I said let's do this 20 times. And when we say return, it goes through and evaluates all the way through, and I end up with my answer. Let me close this so that we can see a little better. Okay, now we can see our answer all the way down. All right, and so we end up where it's showing us our answer and our error, and the error is getting smaller with each turn, and this is its estimate. If I had chosen to do the same thing but maybe put in 40, then my error is going to be much smaller. More terms, but how many digits did I really need in my answer? All right, so that's the basic bisection. Obviously, there's some improvements that could be made to this, right? So you could go in and do things where you were checking to see if the error is less than whatever your tolerance is and stop the program there rather than an arbitrary number of repetitions. But this is how to do the bisection method in MATLAB. Thank you very much for your time.